Today I was thinking that I would... So first things first, I want to use some ready-made AI libraries. I'll be using a neural network here, and obviously there's no point reinventing the wheel and doing complex linear algebra when somebody else has already done that for me. I've used PyTorch before for neural networks, so I'll use that here. It's a Python library though, so I'm going to need a way to use Python in Godot. Luckily on the asset store there's this Python wrapper or, or plugin or whatever called Python Script uh, by somebody named Tui Man. T Tui Man? Is, is that like rat is that like Ratatouille? So I've installed that, I've restarted, and uh, I see Python is an option here, so that's great. Uh, now I just need to install the libraries. The README has instructions on how to install pip, and then I'm going to use pip to pip install PyTorch and its requirements, uh, just NumPy really, which is a math package. It's installed, so now I need something for the AI to do. You might have noticed from the video title and the project name that I'm going to have it play snake. And there, see, there's a, there's a snake. Uh, oh no, that's, that's not, that's not how. And there, see, there's a snake. Uh, keep in mind I'm playing right now, so now I need the AI to actually control it. So I'm just going to follow a tutorial on deep Q learning neuro reinforcement learn. I'm going to make a deep Q network with reinforcement learning. Uh, there's a link to the tutorial I followed in the description. So check that out. The only real work I have to do here is one, make sure that uh, it works with Godot because I have to have the Python script communicating with the Godot script. And two, I need to set up the AI and pick good inputs and outputs for it that makes sense. So what does the snake need to know? If I gave it the entire map, which is a 50 by 50 grid, that's 2,500 individual tiles, which is way too much information. I guess I could give it info on the tiles around it, say a 9 by 9 box, which is only 81 tiles. It'll have to be able to detect bad tiles to go to, that is, if it's going to go outside the map, or if it's going to collide with its tail. So let's call those spaces negative one. It'll also need to be able to see open spaces. So let's call that a zero. Finally, for the food tile, that'll be a one. I, technically, I, I think these have to be normalized to act as inputs. To keep it in the range between zero and one, I'll change those values to zero, 0 0.5, and one. The output is simple enough. It can go up, down, left, or right. So I'll have each direction correspond to a number, and that is four outputs. It also needs some way of motivating itself. So for this, we assign reward values to the outcomes of the different actions it can take. So if it dies, it's going to lose 100 points. If it eats the food, it gets 10 points. Uh, I'm also going to give it points for going towards the food. So it gets plus one if it goes closer, and it gets minus one if it's moving away. Well, the AI is in control now, and it's moving. I'll leave it to train for a while. It's been training for a while, and it's doing terribly. Uh, I hadn't, I hadn't realized this, but, but I, did, I didn't actually make it able to see the food. It, it couldn't see the, the food. It, it, it would just try not to die, and, and, and that's it. So now it can see the food, uh, but there's a new problem. It keeps moving back and forth like this. I think it's because the score sort of evens out when it goes towards the food and away from f the food, and it doesn't necessarily know where the food is if it's not within that 9x9 nine nine box. Okay, new plan. I'm simplifying the inputs. Half the time, it was just seeing a big empty square of nothing, so I'm only going to give it the eight surrounding tiles, and those are just going to be zero or one if it's an empty tile or if it's a tile that'll kill it if it goes to it. Then I'm going to let it know which direction the food is in, so that's four more inputs for the four possible directions. Uh, similarly, I'll let it know what direction it's actively moving in, which is another four inputs. The way these work is each input corresponds to a direction, for the direction it's facing, only one of them is ever going to be set to 1, which means it's moving that way, and then the other directions will be set to 0. And for the food, up to two directions can be set to 1. If, say, the food is above and to the right of it, then the up and right inputs will be set to 1, and the left and down inputs will be set to 0. I'm also going to simplify the output. Right now, it can pick one of four directions to move in. However, if it does an 180 degree turn, that'll just kill it instantly when it collides with its own tail. So there's always going to be a direction it should never go in, so one of the outputs is always useless. I'm going to have three outputs instead, and now that's going to be to turn left, to go forward, or to turn right. Now let's see how it does. Uh, it died. Now let's see how it does. It's not too bad. I made some graphs. 
it seems to slow down asymptotically. So there is a there is a limit to how good it's gonna get. I think it keeps killing itself though. I don't I don't get why it's oh oh no. To calculate the snake's direction, I take the current direction it's moving in, which is a number between 0 and 3. The directions are arranged so that if I add 1 to the number, it makes it turn right, and subtracting 1 makes it turn left. Now if it's currently going in direction 3, and I add 1 to turn right, now the direction value is 4, which doesn't correspond to one of our directions. So I use the modulo operator to compute 4 modulo 4, which equals 0. The way modulo works is it sort of wraps numbers around to be within within a certain range. It's it's basically you, you do division and you take the remainder. However, there's two different ways to implement modulo, the difference being how they handle negative numbers. So here, if it's going in direction 0, which corresponds to going left, and then it tries to turn left to go down, now the direction value is negative 1. When I do negative 1 modulo 4, I expect it to sort of wrap around back into that range and be equal to 3. But Godot doesn't do that. Godot leaves it as negative 1. So the snake tries to move in some hitherto unknown fifth direction and instantly dies. I have to instead use the positive modulo function that makes it behave the way I want it to. And now it works. Kill me. And now it's good. You know, look at him go. It's uh, it's learning. It's it's doing better. Somewhere along the way, I uh, started it off so that it would spawn with a few tail segments right off the bat, so it doesn't have to first learn how to find the food before it can start learning to avoid hitting its own tail. Um, but yeah, it works. It works decently well now. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more AI videos. Uh, now that I have this all set up, I'll probably try some other applications of AI in Godot. Uh, I guess if you have any ideas, you could leave them in the comments. Yep. Okay, bye.